What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a SimCity type of effect on any image in Adobe Photoshop. Alright guys, so today we're going to be creating the SimCity effect in Adobe Photoshop. Now, if you're not familiar with this effect or what it looks like, check out the movie posters for Sin City. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't seen it, it's mostly a black and white, high contrast image where a few pieces are just in color. So we're going to be creating this kind of stylized look using this image today. Alright, so let's jump right into it. The first thing I'm going to do once I have my image open is press Command J to make a copy of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and convert it into a smart object. So let's hold down control and click on our duplicate layer and then choose convert to smart object. Now I like to do this with all of my layers anytime I'm going to be doing some kind of photo editing or retouching um, just because it's easier to go back to my original and also because I like having the ability to use smart filters whenever I'm using an image. And for those of you guys that don't know, smart filters are basically just a way that you can go back and edit the settings that you're using. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do here is hold down the Alt Option key and click on the Adjustment Layer icon found down here at the bottom of the Layers palette. And then I'm going to choose Black and White. And now when this dialog box appears, I want to check off this box that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. And all that's going to do is apply a clipping mask so that it only affects the layer below. Now before I do anything else, I want to add a bit more contrast to this and we're going to do that just by using a handy little tip um, and to do that, I'm going to first create a copy of my black and white adjustment layer. To do that, we'll use the same keyboard shortcut, Command and J. And now I can just drag this below, and you'll see that now both of these adjustment layers, which are currently exactly the same, both have clipping masks applied. So in this new copy that we've made, let's go ahead and change the blending mode to soft light. When I toggle the visibility of this on and off, you can see that it instantly adds more contrast. Okay, and then our top one is basically what's controlling our color, our black and white. Okay, so from here, what I wanna do is grab my brush tool, and to do that, the shortcut is just B on the keyboard, and I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger here so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then let me just grab a brush over here that's maybe got a bit of a harder edge, and then I'm just going to reduce it in size and maybe zoom in a little bit. Okay, so from here, all I'm doing is I'm just going to paint out on the layer mask and maybe use a slightly softer edge so that all I'm doing is erasing away my black and white adjustment layer and I'm revealing the color below. Since we're using a brush, you can always go back in and clean up the edges a little bit. But for this part, I'm using a stylus, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish painting out the rest of these edges with my brush tool. I'm going to use a small brush for these edges here that get kind of close to the, the fingers and the areas that I don't want to be in color. And then I can use a larger brush to paint out the larger areas. And the keyboard shortcut to modify the size of your brush are the left and right bracket keys. So if I type the right bracket a few times, you can see I'm getting a larger brush and I'm able to cover a little bit more area than if I were just using a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead, continue to paint over this for a few moments here and I'll check in with you guys as soon as I've finished. All right, guys, I am back. I've just finished kind of painting back the color into these uh, wrist wraps here so you can now see that this is in color while everything else is in black and white. Now again I was using a stylus to do this so that it's a little bit easier to control the brush and once again the keyboard shortcut to control the size is the left and the right bracket key. The left bracket key is going to make your brush smaller while the right bracket is going to make it larger. Okay so now that we've done this we can go ahead and we can push the contrast a little bit more. So I'm going to select my smart object layer and the next thing that I'm going to do is come back down here to my adjustment layer icon and I'm just going to click on curves. 
Now once I apply a curves, it's automatically going to have a clipping mask attached to it because it's in between these other layers. So all I'm going to do is just make a point here in the middle and kind of drag it down into the right a little bit. All right, and that's just going to give us a little bit more contrast there, make it a little bit more punchier, a little bit grittier. And um, I kind of prefer using curves over layers nowadays, but they do kind of do the same thing. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is create a new layer above all of my other adjustment layers on top. And I'm going to press D on the keyboard to make sure that I've got my default colors here. And then I'll press X to make sure that I have white as a foreground color. And now I just have to press Alt, Option, and Delete on the keyboard. And that's just going to give me a solid white layer. So from there, let's come up to the filter menu and let's go to the filter gallery. Now once you're in here, come into the sketch tab or the sketch group and we're going to choose the halftone pattern. Now for your settings, I'm just going to leave it on line with a size of about 12 and a contrast of around 15 and then hit OK. Now I'm going to zoom out quite a bit and then press Command or Control plus T on the keyboard and hold down the Alt Option key and drag the middle handle way up to just make this larger. Okay, and that's going to scale it from the center so that it's growing in both directions here. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the right side by holding down the Alt Option key and just dragging out. And then I'm going to apply the changes by pressing Enter on the keyboard. Now once it finishes thinking here, we're actually going to trim our, um, our halftone pattern a little bit so that it doesn't take so long and we need to modify it. So to do that, I'm going to press Command A to select all. And I can zoom back in here just so you guys can see that it's basically selecting everything on the canvas. Now, while this is still selected, I'm gonna come down here to my layer mask icon and then hold down Control and click on the little thumbnail here and choose Apply Layer Mask. Now from here, what we can do is change the blending mode to Multiply. And again, press Command plus T to do a free transform. And now hold down the Alt Option key and we're going to do the same thing as before where we just make this a little bit larger and we're going to make it a little bit bigger this way as well, increasing the height and the width. Now from here, I'm going to hover my cursor over the side and just rotate this image a bit like this. And then I'm going to zoom out, hold down Alt Option and Shift and increase the size even more. And then from there, once I apply this transformation, Let's just go ahead and reduce the opacity to around maybe 60 or 70%. So now that we've done that, it kind of creates this effect like there's some blinds, like there's a window in the room or something, you know? Just gives it a little bit more of a sense of atmosphere. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and call that shadow. And then we'll create one more layer. Go ahead and fill it with black. So make sure black is your foreground color and then press Alt, Option, and Delete. Come up to the filter menu and choose Noise, Add Noise. And then we just want to make sure that we have Gaussian and Monochromatic selected and hit OK. And now we can change the blending mode of that layer to Overlay, or maybe let's do Soft Light. And just drop the opacity down to about 20 or 30 percent. Okay, so that's how, that's really how easy this effect is. It looks pretty cool. It definitely adds a lot more drama to our image here. If I grab all of these layers and press Command G to put them into a group folder, you can see where we started and where we ended up. So our result, our after image, has way more of a punch to it, way more contrast, and it looks a lot like our Sin City poster. So I just wanted to walk you guys through how to achieve that kind of effect in Photoshop because it really is a pretty cool effect. You can do this with any image. It doesn't have to be a person. You can you know, pull out pops of color on any image using these same exact techniques. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If so, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Be sure to share it and pass it along. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you next time.